welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. On this episode, we have put together five of six shows that were part of a common storyline, with the last episode sadly being missing to time. We have cut out the beginning and ending of each episode, and these shows originally aired in September and October of 1944. Right with us now as we listen to this episode we are calling The Secret Plans. A cloud of dust and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'm Silver! In Washington, D.C., two operatives of the Secret Service discussed the expected arrival of Jeff Darwin, one of the most trusted agents of the government. Coming all the way from the Pacific Coast. Yeah. I'd like to know why the chief brought him all that distance for a half-hour interview. Darwin isn't in trouble, is he? Trouble? Why, of course not. Jeff Darwin doesn't get into trouble. And there's just one other conclusion. And that? Well, the chief has an assignment of such an extremely secret nature that he can't entrust it to the mails or telegraph, even though the instructions are in code. Well, that's a logical conclusion. I might go a step further. Yeah? I might add that this assignment has something to do with the Pacific area. Darwin being more familiar with that area than the rest of us? Yes. Well, I quite agree. I can think of no man better qualified for work in the West than Jeff Darwin. When you say work in the West, you cover a lot of territory. Of course. Well, Darwin is tops for the Pacific coast, but in the section between the Mississippi and the mountains. Well, that's different. Well, do you know an operative who is more familiar with that part of the West? Well, not exactly an operative. I'm thinking of someone other than an official member of the Secret Service. Uh, what's that in your hand? Look. A silver bullet. Oh, yes. I treasure this. It was given me by a man who once worked with this department on a special assignment. The Lone Ranger? Mm hmm I wish I'd had the opportunity to meet him. Oh, I wish you had. I saw that masked man in action. What masked man? What? Jeff! Darwin! 
Say, you're looking fine. Hello, boys. It's good to see you again. <laughs> How's the West? How was the trip from the coast? West is fine. Trip was terrible. Speed the day when the railroads will replace the stage lines. Is the chief inside? Yeah, I think he's waiting for you. I'll tell him you've arrived. Uh, what are you doing with the bullets, Sam? Oh, this? You don't miss much, do you, Jeff? Silver, isn't it? Yes, it is. Does it mean anything to you? Not a thing. Should it? Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Oh, the Lone Ranger. Yes, I've heard legends. They're not legends, Jeff. They're true. <laughs> you don't believe the stories you've heard? Nope. Therefore, you say the stories of the Lone Ranger's ability are legendary. Well, of course they are. Uh, the chief wants to see you right away, Don. Thanks. Don't bet on your conclusions, Jeff. You might lose. <laughs> I wouldn't lose. There was another man who knew of the meeting between Jeff Darwin and the chief of the Secret Service. This man was Aaron York, who lived near the Rio Grande because it was convenient for his gun-running activities. Then, too, it was reassuring to know that the border was handy in case, through some incredible circumstance, his freeboot plans became known to the law. York was an opportunist, ready to turn his energies into anything profitable. Certain connections, well-paid ones in the East gave him ample material with which to work, information that was known to few. York sat in his office, his bulk filling the massive desk chair. Through heavy-lidded eyes, he studied the man who squirmed uneasily before him. Finally, he spoke. I sent for you, Nizer. I came as fast as I could, Mr. York. You're I... about to become one of a very exclusive group. What? What do you mean? I'm going to tell you something that's known to less than a dozen people in this country. Yeah? That is, I think I am. I wonder how far I can trust you and Baudry. How far? Why, all the way, Mr. York. Me and Baudry have always followed out your orders. We never balked at anything. Yeah, I know. Sit down, Nizer. Thanks. You know, this country is becoming greater all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean the United States. Oh, and the federal government feels that sooner or later, one of the foreign nations will have designs on us. Us? The United States. Because of that, the government has prepared extensive plans for the defense of the coasts. I, I don't see what you're getting at, Mr. Well, Jordan. you will in a minute. The plans for the defense of the Pacific coast have been completed. But certain details have to be checked. Yeah? Now, there's a member of the Secret Service named Jeff Darwin on his way to the Pacific Coast to check the defense plans. Darwin, huh? Mm-hmm. He carries with him a copy of the plans. Oh, I begin to savvy. And I know the route over which he'll travel. But, uh, Mr. York, where's the payoff? There'll be no payoff for some time. Might be months or years. But someday, a foreign nation will be glad to pay a fabulous price for the information Darwin carries. Why, think of what it would mean to an attacking army to have advanced knowledge of every move our troops would make. Knowledge of every concealed fort and gun. But if we got to wait years, Mr. Yager, I'll right? pay you and Baudry in cash for what you do, if you prefer it that way. I do. And I think Baudry will say the same. Very well. Now, here's what I want. I want Jeff Darwin captured and brought here. Where can we find him? He left the stage line at Parker's Bend. He's traveling from there on horseback. And he's traveling alone. I know his schedule, and I'll tell you and Baudry exactly where he'll be camped tomorrow night. This ought to be an easy job. Yes, it should be. Tomorrow night, Darwin will be making this camp on the east bank of Moccasin River. Now, you and Baudry will ride up as if you're simply a couple of pilgrims. There he is, Baudry. Making camp on the riverbank, just like York said he'd be doing. York sure has a way of getting true facts. He pays for them. That friend of his in the east. Nizer, are you sure that's Jeff Darwin? We don't want to get the wrong man. York don't like mistakes. That's Darwin all right enough. I wouldn't take him for a Secret Service man. He looks more like a prospector or something. Yeah, what of it? I want to take us for a couple of fast gunslingers. We look more like pilgrims. Yeah, that's so. He's made himself up to look like a prospector. That's so people won't suspect what he really is. Secret service men ain't like marshals. They don't go around telling everyone what they are. 
Wouldn't be Secret Service man if they did. I wonder where he keeps the plans. I don't know. What's the difference? Neiser. He's watching us. Sizing us up. Let him. We'll ride right up and ask the way to Parker's Bend. And we'll get to talk him and watch our chance to grab him sudden. Get up, boy. Get up, get up. Oh, boy. Oh, easy there. Hi there, stranger. Yeah. Howdy. We want to talk to you. What is it? You needn't have your hand on that gun, mister. What do you want? There ain't no need to be unsociable, mister. We just want to ask the way to Parker's Bend, that's all. Is that all? Sure. Go due east along my back trail and you can't miss it. What's the matter with you? You get your gun in hand every time you meet a pilgrim? Maybe I'm just unfriendly. Say, uh, that's a nice horse you got there. Stay where you are. Huh? Why, what's the trouble? I was just going I to... don't like strangers in back of me. And I don't like your way I of I don't parking. like your excuses for stopping here. You know the way to Parker's Bend. Mount up and get going. Stranger, we don't take that kind of talk. I'll back it up. With that shooting iron? <laughs> Listen, I can draw and fire before you can squeeze that trigger. Don't try it. Why not? Oh, good work, Nizer. Smashed his gun neat. Fix him. I'll show him. Oh, you don't? Oh, oh. Don't fight, Nizer. Uh, get behind him. He's a fighting fool. Gun slap him. <laughs> Recovering from his amazement at the unbelievable speed of Nizer's draw, Jeff Dowron became a fighting fury. He ducked and sidestepped. He turned and wheeled. Whipped blow after blow to vital spots. He staggered Boder with a jab to the stomach and momentarily stunned Nizer with a sharp hook to the chin. But every blow that Darwin scored, he took two in return. Get behind him. Uh, fix it. Get him from behind. Gun club him. Oh. oh. Yeah, that'll do it. That ought to fix him. Yeah, we fixed him all right. We fixed him permanent. We can't lug a dead man to York's place. We'll take everything he's got and drag the body down the bank of the river. We can hide it in the bushes. No one will find it there. Mr. York, there wasn't anything else we could do. Beaudry, when I give orders, I want them carried out. And I told you I wanted Darwin brought here. Yes, I know. Well, you didn't do it. You think I talk just so as I can exercise my tongue? I didn't want Darwin killed. At least not right now. Mr. York, I'll leave it to Nizer. We couldn't bring him in alive. Beaudry's right, Mr. York. It had taken a dozen men to capture him alive. I never seen such a fist fighter. We brought everything he had, Mr. York. Yeah. There's his saddlebags, his pack, the stuff that was in his pockets. The grub he had. Everything. We even brought his clothes in case he had something hidden in the lining. There's everything, Mr. York. Did you bury him? No, but we hid the body so it won't be found. Ah, you bungled this job. We'd done our best. We hid the back trail and everything. Mr. York, if Darwin had the plans with him, they've got to be there in that stuff. We brought everything he had. We'll see. We even brought some pictures he'd made with a pencil. Here. Sim? Hmm. Seems to have been something of an artist. Here, Mr. York, let me show you something. I found this bundle of writing. These might be the plans you want. Yeah, let me see. Hmm. In code. Sure, but you can decode them. There might be a key to the code among Darwin's effects. Leave these things here. All right. And that's all for now. Go back across the border, and if I want you, I'll send for you. We'll be in the usual place. Come on, Isaac. Well, this is interesting. In my hands... The secret plans for the defense of the West Coast of the United States. <laughs> yeah, this will be worth a fortune to a foreign power. In Washington, D.C., the head of the Secret Service was at first annoyed. I told Darwin to send me a report each day. His itinerary was arranged to make it possible. I haven't heard from him since he left Parker's Bend four days ago. The chief was annoyed, then he was concerned It's been a week Check my electric telegraph with these men in the west Bring me the replies just as soon as you can The chief was annoyed, then concerned Then he became worried Ten days There's been no trace of Darwin beyond Parker's Bend, chief But his trail No sign of it His horse No trace Get men who know the west Frontiersmen, scouts, men who can find a trail and follow it. But keep Darwin's business and identity a secret. Two weeks. Not even the scouts can find a trail. Darwin must be dead or captured. And what about the plans? (laughs) 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Jeff Darwin of the Secret Service had been missing for two weeks. The department head in Washington was worried, not only about Darwin, but about the secret defense plans he had with him. The Secret Service chief thought Darwin must be dead or captured. Jeff Darwin was neither dead nor captured. He was in an Indian village, lying on buffalo skins in the sunshine near a large wigwam. Darwin watched an Indian approach. You got eyes open. That good. By and by, you get strong, get well. Are you the leader of these Indians? That right. Me, Chief Thundercloud. Thundercloud, huh? Sit down. Maybe better you not talk yet. You unconscious for a long time. How long? Two weeks. I've been conscious since yesterday. I wanted to think. I didn't want to talk. Kept my eyes closed. Uh, How did I get here? Hunter find you on bank of stream. You hurt bad. My clothes? Where did these clothes come from? You got no clothes when Indian find you. No clothes? How about... How about my horse? The saddlebags? You alone. They're nothing else. Nothing? Not even a... A pack? They're nothing. I see. Thundercloud, how far is Parker's Bend? On other side of mountain. Did your hunters have far to bring me? Half day on horse. I see. Maybe you tell Thundercloud what happened. I had the drop on them. Two of them. Before I could fire, one man drew and fired. Shot my gun away. Maybe you got friends. We send them word. Tell them where you are. No. Oh, I fell down on them. Failed them. I can't go back until I find those two men. I won't go back until I find them. In the days that followed, Jeff Darwin let his beard grow so he wouldn't be recognized. He stayed in the Indian village at night, but each day he rode a barred horse through the surrounding country in search of the men who'd robbed him. Disgraced. Can't go back. Wouldn't help if I reported to the chief. He'll know something happened to me. To the plans. I can't go back. Those two should never have gotten a jump on me. Day after day, Jeff Darwin rode through hills and valleys. He returned to the scene of the fight, but found nothing. He questioned those he met, but learned nothing. Three weeks after the attack, Jeff Darwin met a leathery-skinned frontiersman. Hello, I ain't seen the man you described, mister. I'm sorry. All right, thanks. Hold on. Maybe you've seen something of the man I'm hunting for. You hunting someone? Yep. He's about 5'10 high and solid built. Smooth shaved and rides a piebald horse. What? Oh, uh, you know his name? No, nope. I found people in Parker's Bend that had seen him, but none knew his name. He disappeared after leaving there. He hid his tracks right slick. No sign of him. He, he hid his tracks? Ain't seen him, have you? No. Why do you want him? Well, me and some of the other boys are hunting him for some government official. I guess the critter's wanted by the law. Oh, I see. Well, I got to get along now. Bye. Goodbye. Wanted by the law. They think I hid my tracks. Think I double-crossed them. Stole the plans. Well, that removes all doubt about what to do. I can't go back. Not unless I redeem myself. Not unless I find those thieves. 
Until then, Jeff Darwin is dead. In Washington, the lights burned late at night in an official office. The Secret Service chief and his best men have been discussing Jeff Darwin's case since noon. After ten hours, we haven't had a single suggestion. There must be some way to locate Darwin. Chief, we've had a lot of suggestions in the five weeks he's been lost, but none have helped. The best frontiersmen in Texas have failed to find a trace of him. Darwin wouldn't betray the government. Of course not. Uh, What's that you have? This? Oh, a pocket piece, that's all. Oh. Chief, just a minute. We've tried everyone except the man who knows more about the West than all the others put together. Who? Well, he helped us before. He gave me this bullet as a souvenir of that occasion. It's silver, see? The Lone Ranger. Yes. The rest of you may go. Sam, you stay here for instructions. I'm going to send you west to give the Lone Ranger all details. I'll try to reach him before you get there to arrange the meeting. The fate of this nation may rest on his shoulders. Word flashed into the west by telegraph, and the federal man followed by the fastest means. He went to a designated spot at night and waited hoping the Lone Ranger had received the message from Washington. He waited one hour, two hours. Then he heard the hoofbeats of an approaching horse, the thrilling cry of the masked man. Come on, Silver! Oh, Silver, oh, boy, oh, easy, steady. Thank goodness you've come. Sam, it's good to see you again. Steady, big fella. trouble, <laughs> serious trouble. Well, what can I do to help? You've got to find out what happened to a man named... Darwin, Jeff Darwin. One of your men? Yes. No one's to know what you're doing. Not even your nearest friends, not even Tonto. You must work alone. The whole thing must be held in the strictest secrecy. The following morning, Chief Thundercloud was surprised to find Jeff Darwin sitting in front of his wigwam. The old Indian walked over and sat beside him. You not ride today? No, not today, Thundercloud. I don't know as I'll ride tomorrow either, or the next day. What matter? It's no use. I can never redeem myself. Maybe Thundercloud helped. No, you couldn't. See, I can't remember what happened. It's it's all confused. Uh, You say two men capture you. Is that not right? I don't know what happened. I imagined a lot of things. Maybe I just imagined how those men looked. Uh... I remember a name... Nizer. But no one around here ever heard the name. No Oh. What's that? This bullet of silver. Me wear around neck on cord. A bullet of silver? Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? I've heard legends. They're not legends, Jeff. They're true. You ever hear of a fellow who used bullet of silver? Yes. Yes, I've heard of him. Him called Lone Ranger. But Thundercloud, how did you get that bullet? Did he give it to you? That's right. Do you know him? Me, no. Well, tell me, tell me this. If I held a gun on him, had the drop on him, and his gun was in his holster, could he draw and shoot my gun away before I could fire? Him do that. He could? Then it can be done. That's right. I wasn't just imagining. My memory wasn't playing tricks. The man I want is named Nizer. You maybe asked Lone Ranger to help find him, Nizer. How can I? How can I ask him? Where can he be found? Maybe him see signal. Maybe him come here. Thundercloud, what what kind of a signal? Send for him. Send for that lone ranger. If the stories I've heard are true, if they're not legends, that man might be my salvation. My salvation? He might be much more than that. Me call men. Mataku! Yahinose! Watule Aung! Sejokin! Thundercloud's men leaped to obey their leader's orders. Great piles of dry grass were quickly made. Three of them, spaced 50 paces apart. Three great fires were lighted. When the flames rose high, damp moss and wet leaves were thrown on the mounds. Smoke columned high into the air. It was a signal. A signal in smoke on the still air of the early morning. It was Thundercloud's signal to the Lone Ranger.
Tonto and Dan Reed were in camp. The Lone Ranger hasn't been back since he left last evening, Tonto. That's right, Dan. Golly, it must have been an important meeting. Him not say what meeting for. Are we going to stay in camp until he gets here or ride out to meet him? Well, we stay here. I'm going to look out and see if I can see him. Uh-huh. I've just got to go to the top of this arroyo. There, I can see a long way on the plane. You not go far, Dan. Breakfast ready plenty soon. Think I see him, Tonto? Huh? That's good. It seems to be a white horse. And you watch. Make sure. I will. Tonto, come here a minute. Huh? What matter? I want to show you something. Huh? Tonto, come. Look off to the west. He's on the top of that hill. Looks like columns of smoke. Uh, Wait. No, wait. Uh, Uh, me see him. Is that a signal? Thundercloud Village in that direction. Chief Thundercloud? That's right. Golly, do you suppose that... Thundercloud signal for us. That signal for Lone Ranger. Oh, here he comes. That's the Lone Ranger heading this way. Come on, Silver! Him point to smoke signal. Him see it too. Yes, and he sees us standing here. Maybe we go Thundercloud Village right away. Should I saddle Scout and Victor? Wait, we see. Oh, Silver, oh, oh, oh easy. You saw the smoke signal. Yeah, steady, big fella. <laughs> Thunderclouds Village, isn't it, Toto? That's right. Should I saddle up? Dan, Toto, come over here while I tell you something. Uh, something matter? Golly, I never saw you look as serious as that. Now sit down here and listen carefully. Uh, yes, sir. Thundercloud may need help, but I can't go to him. Uh, Toto, you and Dan ride to Thundercloud and see what you can do. Where will you be? I, I can't tell you, Dan. Oh. I may be gone for several days or weeks. Golly. If we meet, don't recognize me unless I speak to you first. If you don't hear from me, don't try to find me. If you receive a message from me, do exactly what that message says. No matter what else you may be doing, drop it and follow the instructions I send you. Now, is that clear? Yes, sure. We do it. Dan, Toto, I'm sorry I can't tell you more. How how soon are you going to leave here? Right now. Here, Silver. Well, whatever you're going to do, good luck to you. Thanks, Dan. Steady, big fella. Hope we'll be with you both again real soon. We go see Thundercloud now? Yes, right away. Adios. 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 Come on, Silver. Golly, Tonto. I wonder. Come, Dan. We go see Thundercloud. Aaron York sat at his desk in the well-furnished office in Prairie Bend. The desk was littered with a miscellaneous assortment of objects. A man's wallet, a clasp knife, a match safe, numerous things that Jeff Darwin, the Secret Service man, had carried. York opened the drawer of the desk and picked up a thick sheaf of papers. He turned to two men in the office. Nicer, I'll tell you why I brought you and Baudry back here. You got these plans from the Secret Service men, but they're worthless. They're in code. Well, it stands to reason, York. If Jeff Darwin carried coded plans, he'd have to have the key to the code. Did you look through the stuff we took from him? You thick-headed numbskull. I've spent days pawing through this junk. Of course there's a key to the code, but I can't find it. Uh, Mr. York. Yeah, what is it, Baudry? Maybe Darwin's got the key in his head. Maybe he memorized it. The boss has thought of that, Baudry. Of course I have. Well, all that writing don't mean nothing without knowing how to translate it, huh? I know. As it stands, it's just a meaningless jumble of words. Now, decoded, it represents the detailed plans of every proposed fortification on the western frontier. And someday, someone, maybe a foreign country, will pay a fancy price for that information. Mr. York, if the government finds out that the plans have been stolen from Darwin, won't the plans be changed? Don't you worry about that, Nizer. Remember, I got a friend in the East who keeps me posted. Uh, that's so. If you two fools hadn't killed Darwin, we'd be all right. I gave you implicit orders to stop him and get the plan. I know you did, and like I said before, he put up more of a scrap than we expected. I bet he was the toughest scrapper in the Secret Service. We'd done the best we could, boss. We brought in everything he had, including his clothes. Did you look through them real good? Of course I did, Baudry. I even ripped out the lining to see if anything was hidden beneath it. And you looked through all this stuff? Uh, what's his pencil? Just leave on? those things alone. Those are the sketches Darwin made. Oh. What do you want us to do, Mr. York? I brought you two back to Prairie Bend to help me. Now, we've got to find the answer to this code. All the work we've done, all the risks we've taken, it's wasted unless we do. You're right about that. If it takes weeks, months, or a year, we've got to crack the code on these plans. (laughs) 
After weeks of futile effort, the Secret Service had asked the Lone Ranger to try to locate Jeff Darwin. Sworn to absolute secrecy, the masked man had ridden away alone. That was why Dan Reed and Tonto were riding without their usual companion when they saw smoke signals in Chief Thundercloud's camp. Thundercloud's Indians had found Jeff Darwin, not dead, but badly beaten. The chief didn't know who Darwin was, but he did know that Darwin was desperately in need of help. Oh, scout! Oh, 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 oh. Tai Kimosabe. Tai. Wear friend who wear mask. Him not come with you. <laughs> Lone Ranger. Him go away. Not tell where. Young fella, friend of Tonto. You bet I am. Good friend of Tonto. Him named Dan Reed. Nephew, Lone Ranger. Dan, this great chief, Thundercloud. Oh, Dan. It is good to know the great chief. My friend Tonto has told me you are a man of wisdom and a great hunter. Mm, boy talk, good talk. Thundercloud like boy. Tonto see smoke signal from Thundercloud. You send for Tonto? Me want you. Want masked man, too. Where Lone Ranger? Well, him go away. Tonto not know where. Tonto not know? Lone Ranger make promise. Not tell where him go or why. Lone Ranger never break promise. Ah, uh, that good. Why Thundercloud send signal? You come. See feller in Thundercloud camp. Oh, what feller in camp? Pale face. Me think him need help. Think you, Lone Ranger, help him. Oh, what wrong? Not know. Not savvy, pale face. Him not talk. Thundercloud think him afraid. Oh, pale face, maybe outlaw. Not think him outlaw. Think him good, pale face. You come in here. Hello, Chief. What? These friends come see you. See me? I don't... This boy, Dan Reed. Indian, Tonto. Well, if you're friends of Thunderclouds, I'm proud to know you. He saved my life. My name is Jeff... Jefferson, that is. Oh, Tonto, glad to know you, Jeff. Same here, Mr. Jefferson. Indians find pale face. Him almost died. Golly, what happened, Mr. Jefferson? I made camp near the bend of the Wolf River. Someone attacked the camp during the night. Caught me off guard. Not Indian who attacked camp. White man. Leave plenty white man sign. That's all I know. That the men who attacked me were whites. They took everything I had. My horse, saddle, saddlebags, everything. They even took the clothes I was wearing after leaving me for dead. Them must beat you plenty bad. I'd be a dead man now if some of Thundercloud's Indians hadn't come along when they did. They brought me here, nursed me back to health. Oh, you say fellas take everything, then take clothes you wear. Why? Well, uh, I don't know. All I know is that I've got to find them. I've got to catch the men who raided my camp. I've got to get back everything they took from me. It may be too much trouble to get back horse, saddle, and clothes. But you don't understand, Tom. Why, fellas, take everything, Jeff? Why? What uh, them look for? Well, huh? that's something I, I can't tell you. Well, you not talk. How we help you? But Chief Thundercloud said you were friends of the Lone Rangers. He said he'd send smoke signals that you and the Lone Ranger would come. Lone Ranger not able come now. Him go away. Maybe for many moons. Tonto not know where him go. No one know where Lone Ranger go. The one man in all the West who could really help me. And no one, not even his best friends, know where to find him. You not savvy who attacked your camp? No, no idea in the world. It was night. Total darkness. I wouldn't recognize the men if I saw them. Golly, Tonto, why don't you have Mr. Jefferson show us where his camp was? Maybe you could uncover some sign. Ah, Tonto willing to try. Tonto, best Indian scout, best tracker in country. Well, I'll be glad to show you where the camp was. But the men who raided the place were careful to cover their tracks. Sometime even careful, feller. Make mistake. How far is it to the place? Maybe a half day's ride. Thundercloud give you horse. You ride. Show Tonto where men rob you. Maybe we not come back here right away. Maybe Pale Face stay with Tonto and Dan, Thundercloud. I'll get ready. And if it takes until doomsday, I'll stay on the trail of the men who took those... Took what, Jeff? Uh, never mind. I'll stay on the trail of the men who robbed me. At the same moment, 
Aaron York was speaking to his right-hand man, Fred Neiser. Neiser, how long you figured it'd take you to ride from here to the place Darwin was camped? Uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe a half a day. Why? Take a couple of the boys and go on back there. Go back? But what for? Just search, you fool. We gotta find the answer to the code on these plans. Now, maybe you overlooked it. Maybe it's still there someplace. We took everything, even the clothes Darwin was wearing. Yes, and you fought him in the dark before you killed him, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Well, then it's possible he dropped a notebook or something from his pocket during the fight. Something you overlooked when you stripped him. Now go back there and look for it. Well, it's been some time since the fight, but we'll go look. We'll go over that place with a fine-tooth comb. And see that you do. And take Blackie with you. Let him look around. Dan and Tonto didn't suspect that the man called Jefferson with a month's growth of beard on his face was the one for whom the Lone Ranger searched. The two followed Jefferson to his last campsite on the bank of the Moccasin River. They reined up in late afternoon. Oh, Scott, oh, 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 oh. This where you make last camp, Jefferson? Yeah, right here. I had my blanket spread out beneath that tree there. It was too dark for me to recognize the men. They must have known you were going to be here. I think they did, Dan. They may have followed me during the day, or they may have known I would camp here. In either case, they took pains to keep their hats well down over their eyes. Well, there's plenty sign of fight here. How many fellas attacked you? Two. I'd made my camp, and I was just about to turn in when I saw the two men riding toward me. They came in close and dismounted. They asked their way to Parker's Bend, and I told them. But I didn't like the way they acted. One of them kept trying to get behind me. I drew my gun and told him to shove on. One word led to another. Stranger, we don't take that kind of talk. I'll back it up. With that shooting iron? <laughs> Listen, I can draw on fire before you can squeeze that trigger. Don't try it. Why not? Good uh, work, Nizer. Fix him. I'll show him. No, you don't. Uh, fighting, huh? Yeah. Get behind him. He's a fighting fool. Uh, then slap him. Uh, uh, They started clubbing me with a gun barrel. I went down and they kept beating me. Then I lost consciousness. Didn't know anything else till I came to in Thundercloud's camp. Golly, it's a wonder you weren't killed. I guess they thought they had killed me. You hear one feller call the other one Nizer. Yes, Nizer's the name of one of them. Tracks a horse, not show on hard ground. No, there'd be no chance to follow their tracks after all this time. Can't even see my back trail. Fellas, take your horse, huh? Horse, clothes, saddlebags, everything I had. Wait, wait. What's the matter? Horse come this way. I don't hear anything. Me feel hoofbeats and ground. Dan, you take all horses and lead them down there. Get them out of sight. Come on, Scout. This way, Victor. Come on, Doc. Why'd you send the horses away, Tonto? Maybe better we hide. Now I can hear the hoofs. We go over there near stream. Get back a brush. Dan, keep horses out of sight. Good idea. You got gun? Yes, Thundercloud loaned me one. I wonder... They say a criminal always returns to the scene of his crime. Now come this way. We get back a brush. All right, right up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Eddie, this is the place, all right. Yeah, dismount. You too, Blackie. The boss says you've got such sharp eyes. You prove it now and take a good look around here. <coughs> well, I'll do my best. Yeah, it better be plenty good. Hey, there's new hoof marks here. Yeah. What do you make of them, Blackie? Yeah. These tracks are fresh made. The grass ain't sprung back. Look here, Nizer. Nizer! What's that? We want you. Let them have it! There they are! Hit leather! Get away! They're coming for us! Mount up! Nizer! Nizer, wait! I'm hitting my leg! I can't mount! That's your worry, Blackie. No, don't leave me! No! Get up! Get up there! Get up! That's Nizer. That's the man I want. They called his name. Come back here, Nizer. I'll let you have it. Tonto, Tonto, get Dan back with those horses. We've got to catch that pair. Wait, wait, Jeff. Fella here got wound. Dirty buzzards. Him hurt plenty bad. The one they called Nizer put a bullet in him. I was hit in the leg. I couldn't mount, so... So Nizer finished me. Do you know where I can find Nizer? I... I know. You come close, I... I'll tell you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, to continue our story. Jeff Darwin thought he would learn about where his property had been taken by Nizer when one of the outlaws lay mortally wounded. Tonto had been unable to learn the Secret Service man's true identity, knowing Darwin only as Jeff or Jefferson. The Indian suspected that Jeff was interested in getting back more than the horse, saddle, and clothing that had been stolen. Jeff and Tonto leaned close to the dying outlaw as Dan brought the horses back to camp. I saw one of the crooks shoot that man on the ground. Yep, right, Dan. Skunk. When he saw that this man couldn't mount up to escape, he fired point blank. Oh, here. Take water. Yeah. Uh, Oh, that's good. Thanks. Who are you? They... They call me Blackie. You travel with Nizer? Yeah, with Nizer. Do you know who I am? Yeah. I know. Nizer was the one that robbed me, wasn't he? Oh. But I wasn't with him. Blackie, plenty weak. Him not last long. Blackie, I'll get Nizer. I'll get those killers for you. You want that, don't you? Yeah. There's more water, Tano. Oh. Tano, keep him with us till he talks. Uh. Here, take another drink. Thanks. Now, Blackie, where will I find those men? You, you... Blackie. uh, You go... Go to... Tell me one word. Where? Where? He's got to tell me. He's got to... Tonto, he's gone. Uh, now you stay here. Me go. Here, Scout. Where are you going, Tonto? Me follow the trail of men who get away. Scout, fella. Dan, you take Jeff to our camp. Tonto, meet you there. Yes, Tonto. Get him Tonto. up, Scout. Nicer and Baudry reached Aaron York's office in the town of Prairie Bend just before midnight. Oh. I've been taking those pencil sketches up on the wall. Well, what'd you fellas find out about? Where's Blackie? Blackie won't be back, York. He, uh, he's made his last ride. What do you mean by that? Blackie's dead, boss. What happened? Who killed him? I did. I don't know what kind of a riddle this is, but you better explain, and quickly. Sure. We went out to Darwin's camp. Me and Blackie and and Baudry here. Go on. We ran into kind of a surprise. Uh, Baudry? That's right, Chief. We Shut up and let Niza tell the story. What kind of a surprise? What do you mean? We just got there and started looking around, when Blackie seen signs of someone being there just ahead of us. What? What about Darwin's body? Still there, wasn't it? His body was there, all right. And wide awake and throwing lead at us. Him and some red you skin mean and to some say other. You say that Darwin is alive? He's plenty alive. And we just got away with the skin of our teeth. Me and Boulder here. And Blackie? A red skin knocked him down, a shot in the leg. He couldn't get to the saddle, so I drilled him. Oh. You killed him before he could talk. That's it, Chief. At least I don't figure he had time to tell him anything. I'd have got that red skin and Darwin, too. There wasn't time. I had to get away. It's a good thing you didn't kill Darwin. What? Well, I thought you. Hey, you fool. You'd killed Darwin, I'd have been tempted to kill you. Don't you see Darwin's the answer to our whole problem? But we have the plans, but the whole thing is in code. Darwin, alive, can give us a solution to the code. Oh. From now on, your job is to find Jeff Darwin. Find him and bring him here alive. And so help me if you fumble this job. It'll be your last. Tonto returned to his camp. He found Dan Reed and Jeff anxiously awaiting his arrival. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Did you learn anything, oh, Tonto? Those men, they... They got away, huh? 
Uh, well, me not able to follow trail at night, Jeff. Maybe me go back tomorrow. I wish I knew something about trailing men in this country. I'd get on that trail and never leave it until I came up with them. Uh, maybe. But you not tell Tonto why you anxious to find men who rob you. Tonto, I know you're a good and loyal friend. So is Dan here. But please believe me, it... Well, I can't tell you. I can't. Well, maybe you got plenty good reason. Believe me, I have the best reason in the world to keep after those men until I catch up with them. Tonto, believe you, Jeff. You must be hungry, Tonto. I'll stir up the fire a little and get supper for you. Uh, me take care of Scout while you do that, Dan. Tonto, I want to ask you... Are you sure it's all right for me to stay here with you and Dan? I mean, I don't want to be any trouble. You say you want to see and talk to Lone Ranger. You stay here, maybe him come. I want to talk to that man more than anything else in the world. I... But you and Dan may get in trouble on my account. If anyone should find this place looking for me... Want to make sure them not find you, Jeff. Me fix place back in cave near here for you to stay. Anyone come here... Them not see you. Now, me take care of Scout. You'd better get something to eat yourself. Ah, then we get some sleep. Maybe ride long trail tomorrow. More than a thousand miles to the east, a small group of grim-faced men held a conference. Their meeting place was a government building in Washington, D.C., and every man present was a member of the United States Secret Service. It's been over a month since Jeff Darwin disappeared. I assume that you'll all realize what could have happened. For one thing, Darwin may have been waylaid. The plan's taken from him. That's true. For all we know, he may be dead. If anyone knew the tremendous importance of the papers Darwin was carrying, I doubt if they'd stop at murder to get them. That's right. There's a... There's one other possibility which we haven't considered, gentlemen. What's that? You know that I hate to consider this a uh, possibility. But men have been known to turn traitor. Oh, Jeff wouldn't do anything like that, Mr. Sanders. Why, well, I've known Jeff I've Darwin known for Jeff years. longer than anyone here. He wouldn't sell out at any price. Any price could be a large amount of money, John. Those plans would be worth a large sum to anyone interested in our western fortifications. Personally, I'm inclined to agree with your sentiments. I was merely discussing possibilities. Well, that's right. We do have to look at every angle. What about the man who was tracing Jeff Darwin? Any reports from him, Mr. Sanders? Not a word. However, I'm sure that you he... You said he was reliable. The Lone Ranger? Well, don't worry. He's reliable. And if there is anyone in the West who can find a trace of Jeff Darwin, the Lone Ranger is the man. It's strange we haven't heard from him. After all, it's been nearly five I weeks since... I beg your pardon, Mr. Sanders. Telegraph message. It's been decoded. Let me have it. Yes, sir. Listen. Listen to this. This message is from the man we were just discussing, from the Lone Ranger. Uh... I'm afraid it isn't what you might call good news. This message is from Parker's Bend. Lone Ranger Millie says... Apparently the man I'm seeking has disappeared. Nell has already confirmed he was last seen at Parker's Bend. Since leaving there, he's vanished. However, I'll continue to search for Darwin, and I'll remain on his trail until definite proof of his whereabouts has been established. I'll find Jeff Darwin dead or alive. We can only hope that the Lone Ranger finds Jeff Darwin alive. It was nearly midnight. In the cave which Dan and Chanto shared with Jeff, the Indian stirred, then roused to complete wakefulness. Unmoving... Staring alertly into the false dawn, then... Dan! Dan! Wake up! Huh? Where is that? What's wrong, Tano? Quick, you get Jeff Fuller awake. Count to hear something move. Maybe someone come look for Jeff. Golly! I'll wake him up right away. Does anyone polly around this place? Plenty around here. Tonto not savvy. Maybe Jeff all right. Maybe... Dan! Dan, come quick! What's the matter, Tano? What? 
What's that, Jay? Well, look, Dan. Me find message. Message from Lone Ranger. Golly. You mean the Lone Ranger was here? In this camp tonight? Masked man leave here just now. What's that you're saying about the Lone Ranger? Let me see that note, Tano. The masked man was here? Well, where is he? Quickly, I've got to find him. He's the only one who can help me. We won't find the Lone Ranger until he's ready to be found. He left this note for Tano and me to let us know that he's all right. But what's the message say? The Lone Ranger is on a secret mission, Mr. Jefferson. So secret that he can't even tell us about it. This note he left while we were sleeping simply says... I'll be in touch with you from time to time. And as soon as this mission is completed, I'll return. And we'll ride the distant trails together again. Until then, adios. That's all it says. I wonder just what sort of secret mission he's on. That's something only Lone Ranger knows. Half a dozen men sat in an office of the Secret Service in Washington. They've been called together to hear the latest report from the West. An undercurrent of conversation filled the room as the members of the Secret Service waited for their chief to join them. The talk between two of the men became heated enough to attract the attention of the others. I disagree with you. Yeah, you generally do. And that doesn't prove I'm wrong. Your idea might make sense if anyone but Darwin was involved. It makes sense no matter who's involved. Hold on. What's the trouble? Well, there's no trouble. I simply expressed an idea, and Sam jumped on it. With good cause. What was the idea? You know how long ago Jeff Darwin went into the West with a copy of the proposed fortifications and defense plans for the Western Frontier. Of course. Certainly we all Let me add that all of you know how long it took to prepare those plans. Now, please don't interrupt me, Sam. Go ahead. Express your idea and see what's thought of it. All right, I will. Darwin disappeared over five weeks ago. He hasn't been heard of in spite of all that's been done to find him. And I say, let us consider the plans as worthless. But why consider them worthless? We can't find Darwin. We can't find the plans. Why not assume that the plans have fallen into the hands of a foreign power? But why assume that? That's what I asked him. It's wise to assume the worst. I think that we should recommend that new plans and specifications be made. Do you know what that involves? Travel, surveys, estimates... Months of time, oh, I know. Jeff Darwin may be found. We may learn that the plans he took with him to check for details are perfectly safe. Oh, you're too optimistic, Sam. We can at least wait a little longer. Darwin's been gone over five weeks. We've had the best scouts and frontiersmen in the West trying to find a trace of him. But the Lone Ranger has been searching only a few days. Oh, he'll have no better success than the others. Better drop it, boys. Here comes Sanders. Good morning, boys. Good morning, boys. Good morning, boys. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've been decoding the last word from our masked operative. Has he made headway? Well, he's learned that Darwin was seen in Parker's Bend and left there on schedule. He's also learned that Darwin could travel only four routes, and on each route he would have to pass through a town. He didn't go through any town beyond Parker's Bend. Is that all the masked man learns? Yes. There, you see? He hasn't learned a thing that we didn't already know. But remember this. He learned that much in three days. It took the rest of us five weeks to gather the same information. The fact remains... The Lone Ranger has a different way of applying his knowledge. Huh? The Lone Ranger knows where, dead or alive, Jeff Darwin is. What do you mean by that? Well, here's a map upon which I have circled the area beyond Parker's Bend. The Lone Ranger... But wait. Listen to his decoded telegram. I'll check this community today. And if I find no indication that Darwin passed through here, I'll concentrate my search on the area just described. Where's the telegram from? Yeah. What community does he mean? The town of Prairie Bend. Prairie Bend, huh? It's a few miles from the border. Ranger didn't know that the man who was so badly wanted, the missing member of the Secret Service, was with Dan Reed and Tonto. He didn't suspect that Jeff Darwin, hiding his identity behind a beard and an assumed name, was eating breakfast near Prairie Bend. I think Tonto has the right idea, Mr. Jefferson. But, Dan, wouldn't it be better if all three of us followed the tracks of those men that attacked us last night? No. Well, that's not good. Why? 
You say fellow who attacked last night, same one who robbed you? Yes. He stole my horse, my clothes, my pack, everything I had. You sure him, same fellow? He was one of the two who tried to kill me. I'll never forget the voices. Him tried to kill you, huh? He'd have succeeded, too, if your friend Thundercloud hadn't found me. Him maybe see you go into town, and maybe try again, and maybe have better luck. No, it better Tonto go on trail alone. But Tonto, you you don't know the man. Me follow tracks, maybe find him. How about some more breakfast, Mr. Jackson? No, no thanks, Dan. I'm, I'm too excited to eat much. You've no idea what it means to be so close to redeeming my... Uh, so close to finding the thief. Jeff. You not wear beard very long, huh? Huh? Uh, what's that? Maybe you hide from someone, huh? Well, I... What crook steal that's so important? Tano, I guess I owe you an explanation. You've been mighty fine to me. I can't tell you much, but I, I'll tell what I can. Oh, maybe that helped. Those thieves stole something of very great value. Golly. They stole something that wasn't mine. It was something I'd been trusted to guard. Oh, I can't go back to my friends until I've recovered what was stolen and captured the thieves. You're right about the beard. I I haven't worn it long. I don't want my friends to find me, to question me, until I've redeemed myself. Hang it all. If we could only get the Lone Ranger's help. You don't know what he's doing, do you, Dan? No, sir. It's something secret. He can't tell anyone. We uh, probably won't see him again for weeks. Let me start on trail now. Your scout? We'll wait here till we get word from you, huh, Tonto? Oh, uh, you wait here. <laughs> Get him up, Scout. Well, he seems to be going straight to the town. What's the name of that town, Mr. Jefferson? Prairie Bend. Prairie Bend was near the border. That's why Aaron York made it his headquarters. His big home was even nearer the Rio Grande. The plans about which the Secret Service worried were on York's desk in Prairie Bend. Nizer, the man who'd stolen the plans, sat near the desk. I tell you, Nizer, we can get more than a lump sum for these plans than we've made from gun running and everything else put together. If we can get them decoded. The only man who can do that is Jeff Darwin. I told you about seeing him last night with that redskin. Did he see you? I don't know. He could have heard my voice. Darwin's got to be brought here. It ain't easy, Mr. York. I was thinking, what? if the government knows the plans are gone, they'll change them, won't they? Neither do you think I'm a fool. No, but... Government won't draw up new plans unless it's necessary. It won't appear to be necessary. No? When we've finished with Darwin and have what we want, we'll see that Darwin is found dead with all his possessions, including these plans intact. Oh, and the government won't suspect that you've got a copy of the whole thing. Decode it. No. That's why I'm holding everything Darwin had with him, including his horse. Hey, York. What is it? Look out that window. Well? Over there, studying the ground near the cafe hitch rack. See that red skin? Yes. That's the one that was with Darwin. It is? You sure, Nizer? Dead sure. He's looking at hoof marks. Yeah, so it seems. He's trailed me to town. He's looking for me. He and Darwin don't have figured... not see anyone with him. He ain't far away. He's got that red skin helping him. They were looking for tracks when I saw them near Darwin's old camp. Uh-huh. The Redskins followed my tracks from there. Oh, hang it all. I should have hit him like I did when I brought Darwin's horse away. Just a minute, Nizer. Huh? I got an idea. Yeah? We'll get Darwin. We'll bring him to us. Uh, how? That Indian's looking for your tracks. Fine. Right. You'll find them leading out of town to the cave near my home. Yes, now, but... instead of riding through the creek to hide your approach to that cave, you leave sharp hoof prints. And then, just to make sure Darwin and the Indian know you're the man they want, we leave Darwin's wallet on the trail. And when Darwin gets to the cave... (laughs) Our worries are practically ended. The fact that there were thousands of hoof marks on the mud street of Prairie Bend did not discourage Tonto. The hoof marks of the horse he'd been trailing this far were indelibly stamped on the Indian's mind. If they were among the countless others, he would find them. He studied the ground in front of each cafe, the mud near every hitch rail. He worked methodically down the south side of the street, ignoring jibes, not answering the questions that were tossed at him. 
He came up the north side of the street until he reached the gopher hole. Scout, this plenty good. There, before the biggest cafe, the Indian found the hoof mark for which he sought. Sharp, clear, fresh, and well-defined. There could be no doubt about it. Him here short time ago, Scout. Him right off to west. Now, we on trail again. Get him up, Scout. Tonto found that the trail remained both sharp and clear when Prairie Bend was left behind. He saw that it turned south and ran parallel to a small stream. Here at the turn, he reined up. Oh, Scout, oh, fella, oh. Oh, fella, oh. Tracks go south from here, Scout. Now we go back, get Dan, friend with beard. Bring him here to follow trail. Get him up, Scout. Acting on York's orders, Neiser had made sure his trail would be an easy one to follow. He had also made sure that Darwin's stolen wallet would be seen by anyone who followed the tracks. Tonto would have found it, but he backtrailed to get Dan and Darwin. Another horseman came upon the wallet. It was a masked horseman on a snow-white stallion. He was on the way to Prairie Bend, seeking word of the missing Secret Service man. As he crossed Neiser's tracks, his keen eyes saw the wallet. He leaned from the saddle and picked it off the ground in passing. Looks as if someone lost a wallet, Silver. Seems to. It's like the one they described. Hold on, Silver. Oh, boy. Easy, steady. Initials J.D. It's Jeff Darwin's wallet. The first real clue. And it was dropped by the man who rode that trail. All right, big fella. Come on, Silver. York! York! Open the door! Quick! Neiser, stop yelling. It's good you're home. I told you I'd be here by the time you finished making that trail. York, I made the trail, like you said. Followed the creek? Yes, and I went you into left the... You Darwin's wallet to be found? Sure. And you let the trail go right into the cave? I went right through the cave and out this end. Then I circled back to the mouth of the cave so as I could see when Darwin came. Well, good. And you saw Darwin enter the cave, is that it? No, that ain't it. Well, then get to the point. Why are you here? The man that rode into that cave is the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Acting on York's orders, Neiser made a trail that was supposed to bring Jeff Darwin to a cave near York's home. The trap was baited with Darwin's own wallet, but it was the Lone Ranger who found the wallet and followed the trail to the cave. Neiser saw the masked man and reported to York. Neiser, you sure it was the Lone Ranger? I ain't mistaken, York. There ain't two horses like that white stallion. I heard the masked man call it the name. Silver? Yes, Silver. What's more, he found Darwin's wallet. He was looking at it when I seen him. He followed your trail into the cave. Yes, he'll go through the cave and come out the other opening, right near your house here. Confound it. I didn't think he'd get near us so soon. Huh? huh? So it was the Lone Ranger my friend meant. You knew about him? My eastern friend sent word that the Secret Service was pinning great hopes on someone that had been assigned to the Darwin case. 
And he warned me to act fast. You'd better act plenty fast. He must have stumbled on that wallet by accident. Naturally, he followed the trail in which he found it. How about laying in wait to shoot him when he comes no, out of the cave? No, 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 you stupid fool. And it get him out of the way. And the Secret Service would know there was a plot against Darwin. Plans would be changed. Maybe they already know it. Maybe Darwin sent him word. Well, he hasn't done so yet. Your friend sure keeps you posted. We've got to get Darwin before he does make a report. What'll we do? Neiser, that cave is more like a crooked tunnel. Men can ride in one end and out the other. I know that. It takes about an hour to go through. That gives us time to act. Wait till I get Baudry. Baudry, come here. What do you want of Baudry? You, you'll see in a minute. Did you call me, Mr. York? Yes. There's a man on his way through the cave. He's following Nizer's tracks, but he wants Jeff Darwin. Yeah? Now, we've got to get him out of the way without violence. Well, how do we do it? You and Smitty are to lead him on a long chase. A very long chase. Smitty's over in your stable. I know. Now, he's to ride Darwin's horse, and you ride Nizer's. Darwin's piebald? Well, you gave strict orders he wasn't to be moved. You didn't want his hook. I'm changing the orders. He's to be taken to the mouth of the cave. The mouth nearest here. Yeah? And you and Smitty will start there and ride south. Cross the border and keep going. Now, is that clear? Well, sure. And keep on the move in Mexico for at least a week. Then you can come back here. Now, get going. Leave it to me, boss. That'll take care of the Lone Ranger. When he makes inquiries, he'll learn that one of the horses he's been chasing answers a description of Darwin's horse. That's all he'll need to keep him on that track. Uh, I'll post men at this end of the cave with instructions. Uh, what'll I do? You take four or five men to the other end of the cave. Yeah. There's a chance that the Lone Ranger and Darwin might meet inside the cave and turn back. I see. Capture anyone leaving the cave by the far end. We have to capture the Lone Ranger to get Darwin. I'll adjust things accordingly. I'll get going. Right up here for a minute, boys. I want to look around here. Hey, Nathan. Seems like there's been several horses right into the cave. That's what I wanted to make sure of. Darwin and his friends have gone in all right enough. Now all we got to do is wait and make sure they don't come out. Nathan didn't notice that all the tracks did not go into the cave. He didn't know that the Lone Ranger had stayed inside the mouth for just a moment before leaving and racing toward Prairie Bend. Neiser didn't know, and neither did York, that the masked man was not ahead of Darwin, Tonto, and Dan Reed as they made their way through the winding tunnel. This is the crookedest cave I've ever seen. Well, not right, Dan. Sure goes a long ways into this hill. Well, it was probably made by this stream of water. Wouldn't you say so, Tano? That's right. We stop here for a minute. Oh, 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 Should I strike another match? Uh, we make sure tracks of horses still here. I wonder who made those other tracks, Tano. It not matter. Other horse will not come into cave. Just a minute. Here's a light. Uh, hold it close to ground. How's that? That good. The single set of hoof marks is still here. Uh. That right, Dan. It's strange that only one horse went through here. Maybe plenty horse go through. And maybe them stay in stream where tracks not show. I wonder why this murderer didn't do the same. Maybe we find out by and by. Tonto, look at the flame of this match when I don't shield it. Ah, draft come from ahead. This cave must open somewhere ahead, Mr. Jefferson. We see. Come on. The ceiling's high enough to ride. It better we walk and lead horse. Cautiously and with frequent stops to inspect the shale floor of the cave, the three moved ahead. After another half hour of slow progress, Tonto saw a patch of light and called a halt. They're opening. Yeah. Golly, I'll be glad to get out of this darkness. Well, that, that might be the end of the trail. Wait a minute. Let me strike one more match. Let me make sure the man I want is still ahead. There's no other place for him. We must make sure. He might have found a side tunnel. I can see his tracks. Tonto, 
Those are the same tracks, aren't they? Uh-huh. Them same track. Listen to me. I'm going on alone. You two wait here. Alone? But, Mr. Jefferson... Well, there might be trouble. Uh, gunplay. There might be danger. I... I don't want you to get killed. You've already done enough for me. More than I have a right to expect. Jeff, you friend of Chief Thundercloud. And we glad to help. Tano, you... You don't understand. I... I must go on alone. Well, that all right. You go. Wait here for ten minutes. If, if I'm not back, don't wait for me. Go back the way you came. Are you going to ride the rest of the way? Yes, and fast. Steady. Come on, there. Get up. Golly, Tom. He was nervous, wasn't he? That right, Dan. He acted as if he was afraid to have us with him. Well, him got plenty big secret, Dan. He must have. Him not want us there when him talked to murder. Not want us to hear what said. Him out of tunnel now. Yes. How long did he say we were to wait here? We wait ten minutes. The time of waiting was half gone when Dan and Tonto heard the approach of horses. Who it is when they're outlined against that distant opening. That's right. It's one of those men, Mr. Jefferson Tonto. Me not know. If it is Mr. Jefferson, he's bringing men with him. Ah. Uh. Hello there. We're friends. Where are you? Calling to us. Should we answer? No. No, not yet, Dan. Keep quiet. They're coming close. Ah. Uh. Hello. Answers. Where are you? Mr. Jefferson can't be with him or he calls by name. That's right. The tunnel isn't wide enough for him to pass without finding us. Dan, get ready to ride back trail. Right. There they are. Victor, wind your... Come on. Dan, hold up. Right. Yes, sir. No, you don't. Why don't you? You won't get out of here. Watch them horses. Don't get out of the way. Don't get on them. I'll see no one get back this way. Take them out of the cave. Hold them. Dan and Tonto, aided by the rearing, plunging Scout and Victor, fought as well as they could in the narrow darkness. But the greater strength the attackers soon prevailed. Tightly held by York's men, Dan and Tonto were forced through the cave to the valley beyond. They blinked the change from darkness to daylight. Stop right here. Mr. York will talk to you. Mr. York? Who's he? Lives in that big house. There he comes. Mr. York has a lot to explain. What's the idea of capturing us like this? Hold him right there. Where have gone, Mr. York? Where's the other one? Other one? Yes. You, Indian. Where's the man who was with you? Oh, uh, maybe you mean Jefferson, huh? Jeffrey. Oh. Is that what he told you his name was? Ah. Uh, you not find him? If I had, would I be asking you? There were no other, Mr. York. Just these two. Confound we it. waited just like you said. The one man came out and rode along the trail to the south. Then we went into the cave. Now look here, you st- two. Maybe you don't realize who Mr. Uh, you called him Jefferson, who he is. He's badly wanted. That beard was a disguise. Hey, he didn't... Mr. York, the first to come out of the tunnel wore a beard. What? Yeah, he asked us about the two horses that made those tracks south. We told him one was a piebald. He hit it fast. Of all the... Well, we've done what you told us. I should have been there myself. You've let the man I want get away. Uh, why you want him? Why do I want... Listen to me, Indian. You two, lad. What do you know about that man who was with you? Why you ask that? Huh? Why you... Now look at me. I'm a respectable man. I have an office in town. My name is Aaron York. You can ask anyone about me. You think I'd be engaged in anything crooked? Well, me not know. Did that, uh, that man with you, the bearded man, say he was a fugitive? Did he tell you why I must capture him? Oh, him not mention you. He was after some man who beat him up and left him for dead, Mr. York. Oh, uh, Jake. You needn't treat these two as prisoners. Not yet. I'm sure they weren't in with Mr. Uh, Jefferson and I done any of his crooked deals. Right. Were you, lad? No, sir. We didn't know he'd had any crooked deals. He uh, didn't tell you much about himself, did he? Well, no, he didn't. Well, I'll tell you about him. 
Perhaps when you've heard this story, you'll help me get him. Pete, uh, take these two to the house so they can wash up. I'll be with them presently. What about it, Tano? Uh, we go. Maybe we hear about Mr. Jefferson. Come on, Come on Scout. Come on, boy. Confounded. Mr. York, I didn't know. Oh, I should have given you a description of the Lone Ranger. I never suspected Jeff Darwin had come out of the cave first. What about the Indian and that boy? Yeah, they don't know much about Darwin. Not even his name. I noticed that. Yeah, I'll give him a story that'll put him on my side. Good. I'll use them to help get Darwin. I've got to find Darwin before the Lone Ranger gets to him. The rate he was traveling, you'll have to get him in Mexico. Then I'll get him in Mexico. But, uh... Huh? I wonder what became of the Lone Ranger... the biggest manhunt the territory had ever seen. And yet, not more than half a dozen men knew why Jeff Darwin must be found. The others, a veritable army of famous Indian scouts, trackers, lawmen, and plainsmen, knew only that they were under orders from the United States government to find Jeff Darwin. And in the vanguard was one who knew why. One man who knew that Jeff Darwin had been carrying the complete plans for every proposed fortification of the western frontier. The most tireless manhunter of them all, the Lone Ranger. Come on, Silver. It was nearly midnight when the masked rider of the plains thundered up to the small way station at Wolf River Crossing. Oh, Silver, oh boy. It's any big fella, easy. Hey, hey. What's Keep out of my way and you won't get hurt. Now, now, see here. There ain't nothing here worth stealing. How I'm not you? here to steal. I want to send a telegraph message, and I'm in a hurry. You mean you're, you're going to pay for it? That'll cover it. Sure, sure. Just tell me what the message is, and uh, well, if you write it it's out... It's written. There it is. But that there mask... Oh, never mind the mask. You want to send that message, or shall I send it myself? You know how to use the telegraph? I can manage. Well, uh, I'll send... Hey, th- this don't make no sense. It ain't nothing but a jumble of words. Send it exactly as it is. But what's the... Or... Other... All right, all right. I'll, I'll do it. I guess started... To Washington, D.C., eh? Request you appoint Smiley Royzen, United States Marshal, Prairie Bend. The message that flashed across the continent meant nothing to the operators on the line. It meant nothing until it was received in the office of the Secret Service in Washington. There it was decoded and became a comprehensive message when it was handed to the chief. Good morning, Chief Sanders. Here's a message that came in during the night. From whom? The Lone Ranger. He sent it from Wolf River Crossing late last night. Let me see it. Request you appoint Smiley Royson, United States Marshal Prairie Bend. Royson can be trusted implicitly. Suggest you tell him how Jeff Darwin is wanted. Not necessary to mention missing plans. May need Royson as assistant soon. We'll keep in touch with you. Well, we've given the Lone Ranger a tough job to do. We'll back him to the limit. Chief. Well? We've just put Baker in an office at Prairie Bend. He's not a marshal. No, he's our agent there. All right. Let Baker stay in his office at Prairie Bend. But see to it that this man Royson is contacted and made a marshal without delay. town of Prairie Bend, Aaron York had two men in his office. One of these was Nizer, who'd been his right-hand man. The other was called Blandon. Blandon, I want you to take complete charge, you understand? Yeah. Sure thing, Mr. York. Now, hold on, York. I've been Nizer, charge... keep your mouth shut. You fumbled every play we've made. When I sent you out to get Jeff Darwin, I gave you explicit orders to bring him back here. Instead, you beat him till you thought he was dead and left him. And later, when I sent you back, you ran into Darwin alive with that Indian. Instead of shooting the Indian, bringing Darwin here, you shot one of my own men and then ran away. But I told you, York, he was on the point of screaming. Shut up. You want to know why I put Blandon in charge? I'm telling you. You bungled everything from the start. 
I learned that the Lone Ranger is looking for Darwin. I set a trap that'll take the Lone Ranger to Mexico. You can't blame me for I Darwin. I do blame you. Darwin's the one that went to Mexico. He's down there somewhere, and the Lone Ranger is still around here. So your confounded stupidity that the Secret Service is closing in on this vicinity. How do you mean? They've sent a new agent to Prairie Bend. Baker? Yes, Baker. And where do we stand? Here's all the stuff we took from Darwin. The plans for the fortification of the West Coast. And we can't decode them because we haven't got Darwin. And you blame it all on me. I do. Now get out of here. Get out of my office. All right, York. I'll get out. When I want you, I'll call you. Yeah. Yeah, sure thing. You just call me when you want me. Lyndon? Yeah? From now on, Nizer's going to be hard to get along with. That's what I thought. Maybe we should try to get along without him. Well, I... You get what I mean? <laughs> I guess I do. Take care of it. All right. I'll take care of Nizer. If you don't, Blandon, he might take care of you. I don't like the way the Secret Service is watching Prairie Bend. That Lone Ranger's around here somewhere. To say nothing of all the others that are looking for Darwin. You've got to have Darwin to decode the plans, eh? Yes. And he's in Mexico. I'll send someone down there to get Darwin. Who'll you send? Darwin's friends. What? Oh, yes. <laughs> you see, Blandon, Darwin was traveling with an Indian and a 14-year-old boy named Dan. He lit out across the border, thinking he was chasing the men who robbed him. And left those two behind. Yeah? Well, I convinced them that Darwin was an outlaw. That Nizer and I were on the side of law and order. They're preparing to go to Mexico and bring Darwin back. Well, uh, Paul, uh... <laughs> As a matter of fact, the boy's here in Prairie Bend right now getting supplies for the trip. The Indian's at my home between here and the border. <laughs> <laughs> Your cab got to hand it to you. You've not only taken Darwin's friends, you're using them to get Darwin back in your hands. All I want you to do, Blandon, is to keep an eye out for the Lone Ranger. Make sure he doesn't get Darwin before I do. All right, York. And incidentally, get nicer. The town of Prairie Bend seemed to have become the focal point of those searching the surrounding country for some sign of the missing Secret Service man. Dan Reed heard frequent mention of the manhunt as he went from store to store. He knew someone was being hunted, but he didn't know who. Neither did he know that the much sought for man was a member of the Secret Service. He paid scant attention to the snatches of talk that came to him until he stopped at the livery stable. He heard a familiar name. Pause to listen. Then he forgot the unfinished trading. He forgot the errand that had brought him to the livery stable. He leaped to the saddle and shouted to his horse. Get up, Victor! Dan covered the distance between Prairie Bend and York's ranch in record-breaking time. Tonto saw him coming and knew that Dan brought stirring news. Ho, oh, Victor, ho, oh, boy, ho, oh, oh. ho. Dan, you ride from town plenty fast. What's wrong? Nothing wrong, Tonto. But I had to get back from Prairie Bend to tell you the news. Oh, you better unsaddle Victor and rub him down good. Him got plenty hot. You run him so hard. Sure, sure, I'll take care of him. But Tonto... You know what Mr. York told us about Mr. Jefferson being an outlaw? Uh -huh. We weren't sure whether we should believe it or not. That's right. Well, Tonto, wait till I tell you. You remember the lawman you and the Lone Ranger told me about. The one that the Lone Ranger helped in the Oklahoma Territory when the Doherty gang was broken up. Uh, you remember. Him named Smiley Royce. That's right. Well, Tonto, he's in Prairie Bend. You sure? Yes. I heard several people mentioning his name, Smiley Royson. He's been made a United States Marshal. Oh, that good. Him make heap fine, Marshal. But, Tonto, I think he's looking for Mr. Jefferson. Why do you think that, Dan? I heard Royson talking to the Secret Service man, Mr. Baker. Oh. You see, I was going to say hello to Royson and tell him that I'd heard about him. I went to his office and he was talking to some men, so I didn't go in. Oh, he was describing the man he wanted. I'm dead certain it's Jefferson. Oh, him not call him by name. I huh? didn't want to stay around and be caught listening. 
They didn't mention any, any name while I was there. Uh, Jefferson, him seemed like plenty good feller. Yes, but... Uh, we not know anything about him. Only what he himself said, that he was beaten and robbed and left for dead. Uh, that's right. There's really no proof of what he said. I'll bet he is an outlaw. And golly, Tonto, we were trying to help him. Well, we go to Mexico, find Jefferson, bring him back here. Then maybe we get truth. Oh, oh golly, Tonto. What matter? I was in such a hurry to get back here, I forgot some of the supplies. <laughs> I guess I'll have to make another trip to town. Smiley Royson was proud of his new badge. The two-gun lawman from Oklahoma Territory was alone in the office when Baker of the Secret Service opened the door. Is your name Royson? That's right. What can I do for you, mister? Marshal Royson, huh? I had orders from Washington to drop in and make your acquaintance. Washington? My name's Baker. Baker of the Secret Service. Well, oh, shake. Glad to know you, Baker. Same. Uh, have you had any news on Darwin yet? Oh, I just took off. It's... I know I shouldn't rush you, of course. See, Baker, but... just who is this Darwin gent? I mean, what'd he do? Sorry, Royson, but I can't tell you a thing you don't already know. Finding Jeff Darwin is the most important job in the West today. Oh, I gathered that much. But why? I've heard that the best trackers and scouts in the country are trying to find his trail. Have you? Well, I don't mind working in the dark, but I'd sure like to know what this is all about. Well, I can tell you this much. Finding Jeff Darwin is so important to our government that the Lone Ranger was called in to help in the manhunt. The Lone Ranger? Why, of all... And, incidentally, he was the man who requested that you be appointed to this office. Well, uh... Hmm, what do you think of that? The Lone Ranger... Excuse me, please. Come in. Are you the marshal? No, you dumbbell. I'm just keeping this badge warm for him until he gets back. Now, what do you want? <laughs> That's a pretty good joke. Keeping it warm, eh? Well, I got a message here for you. Message? From who? I don't know. Some outlaw. Fellow riding a white horse and wearing a black mask over his face. Give me a dollar. Hey, give me that message. Hey. All right, now beat it. Well, gee, Willikers, don't you want to know what he said even? Ain't you going to let Go me... Go on home and write me a letter about it. Oh, a man riding a white horse, huh? Here, let me open this message. Wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's him, Baker. It's... Well... I reckon it's clear enough now why Jeff Darwin was so important. What do you mean? This note from the Lone Ranger explains everything. He says Darwin's dead, but that he's found the missing plan. He has? Where? He says for us to meet him tonight by Starvation Rock and he'll turn him over to us. Says also to bring a thousand dollars. Payment in full. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Aaron York's new right-hand man, Blandon, was out of breath when he reached York's office. Blandon, what's the matter with you? Listen, we ain't got a minute to lose. Take it easy. Tell me what's happened. The plan's the Lone Ranger. We gotta hurry. Plans? What about... He got him, I tell you, the mask man. Ah, nonsense, Blandon. You been drinking? Here, the plans are right in my desk. By the way, did you take care of our friend, Nizer? Never mind, Nizer. I tell you, the plans, where are they? Right here in my desk, as I told you. 
Uh, see, Blandon? I don't understand. Hey, wait a minute. Blandon, huh? Look. Look here. These are pages of blank paper. The plans are gone. I was right then. The masked man's got them. Talk, you idiot. What happened? I, I was on my way over to the hotel to look for Nizer. I spotted a masked man down the street. Yeah, yeah. Saw him hand a note to some fella. Before I could think what to do, he was gone. Go on. I followed the fella he gave the note to. Down to the office, I knew Marshall. I snuck up close to the window, hear what I could. What'd you hear? The Marshal, Smiley Royce, said that the Lone Ranger had found the plans and wanted to meet the Marshal and Baker of the Secret Service tonight. Where? Where? Starvation Rock. Oh. Well, Blandon, looks like we underestimated the Lone Ranger. Yeah. But as I said before, that man can stop a forty-five slug the same as any other man. And tonight he's going to. We'll get those plans back and take care of the Lone Ranger at the same time. It's been a long time since Aaron York had taken part in the night ride. But now, with the promise of death to the Lone Ranger, the gang leader wanted to be certain. The outline of Starvation Rock was barely visible in the distance when York and Blandon stopped their horses. Oh, oh. We're not taking any chances, Blandon. Yeah. I heard that the masked man's got eyes like a cat. Yeah, be quiet now. We'll leave the horses ground hitched and walk from here. Don't shoot until I say so, you hear? Hey, don't worry. Come on. Well, there's the rock. Ain't no sign of him. Yeah, we're early. That's good. For a shot at the Lone Ranger, we can afford to wait. I just hope he gets here before Royson and Baker... That way we can get him and get the plans back before they arrive. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to get a little closer? No. Get back here. Behind the brush. All right. Now be quiet. When he shows up... Listen. Blanton, it's him. Look at that white horse. Yeah. Get your gun ready. We can't miss. That rock ain't 30 feet away. Quiet now. Let him come up and stop. When I give the signal, start shooting, you hear? And don't stop until your guns are empty. Sure. All right. Let him have it. We got him. Good work. Knocked him clear out of the saddle. Come on. <laughs> you was right, Mr. York. The Lone Ranger can stop lead just like any other man. We must have hit him a dozen times. They're coming. The Marshal and Baker. Here we are. Come on, give me a hand. Help me fire those guns. He dead? Sure, he's dead, you fool. You think anyone could live? Here they are. Got the plans? Yeah, now, come on. Let's get away from here. Duck back into the shadows. Get back the horses. They can't see us. They just fired to let us know they was coming. Sort of warning shots. an ambush, Baker. Someone shot the Lone Ranger. Well, the plans? What about the plans, Royce? Here, help me. He, he's dead, Baker. But what about the plans? Are they still here? I don't here? know. You hear that? Yeah. Baker, you look for the plans and get his body back to town, will you? Steady there. I'm going after the man that shot my best friend. Get up there. <laughs> Under cover of darkness, the Secret Service man lifted the lifeless form of the masked man to the back of the white horse and returned to Prairie Bend. From the corners, he went to the marshal's office, lighted the lamps, and waited. He knew, by the way Smiley Royson entered the room, that the killers had escaped. No luck, eh, Royson? Uh, they got away, Baker. But not for long. What are you doing? I'm taking this star off my shirt. But why? Here. Turning him a badge, Baker. Notify the government, will you? Well, now, hold on, Smiley. I quit. But you can't quit. Now we need you more than ever. Back of that badge, I'm a lawman. 
When a lawman gets a criminal, he's supposed to give him the protection of the law. Oh, but Smiley, you I'm can't I'm going to do... find the trail of the men who killed the Lone Ranger. I'm staying on that trail until I get those men. And when I get them, I'm going in shooting. Now listen to reason, Smiley. Baker, you can talk yourself blue in the face. I'm not going to make any arrests on this job. I'm going out to kill. Understand? There. Now, where is he? The coroner told me to leave him in the back room. He'll be over in a little while. Oh, I see. Smiley, for the time at least, it might be better to keep this particular murder a secret. Yeah. When the word that the Lone Ranger is dead gets around, it'll shake the country. That's right. I'm going to see him. Baker, if I could tell you how much the friendship of the Lone Ranger meant to me and to a thousand other lawmen. Well, I'll light the lamp in here. Yeah. Hey, wait. You, back there in the corner. Get your hands up, quick. Who's there? Hello, Smiley. That voice. Good to see you again. The Lone Ranger, alive. Yes, very much so. Oh, but look over there where the moonlight comes in. There's a dead man. Yes, he's still there. Oh, what a relief. Baker, shake hands with a lone range. Hello, Baker. How, do do? How are you? Well, who's the dead man? Do you know? Oh, well, Baker, I've never seen him before. But it's plain that he figures somewhere in this case. Otherwise, he wouldn't have impersonated me. He never got away with it if it hadn't been dark. Now, here, maybe this will help. Here's a message I got this afternoon. I thought it was from you. Oh. I see. I should have known it was phony. I wondered about that part, about bringing a thousand dollars, but I figured you'd answer that when I saw you. Now, this dead man knew about the plans. Yeah. Someone else knew that he had them. Well, they knew about it all right. They also knew the rendezvous. We heard the shots as we were on the way there. Smiley, Baker. Yeah? This man may be dead, but if we play our cards right, he can still be a big help to us. Huh? The people involved think I'm dead. Let them continue to think so. Yeah? With one exception... You know my friend, Toto? Oh, sure. If you see him, tell him the truth. You figure that somewhere close by is a man or men that killed this hombre, and you want them to keep on thinking they shot the Lone Ranger. Is that it? Yes. And sooner or later, they may overplay their hands. I believe this man was carrying the plans. Probably some kind of a quarrel within the gang, and he decided to double-cross his partners. Well, that's likely. That means that Jeff Darwin does not have the plans. Say... Could that man be Darwin? No, Baker, I made sure of that. Well, whoever shot that gent has got the plan. That's right. And it's a definite lead. I'll be in touch with both of you. Well, you needn't go out the window. Silver's waiting out here. Baker, he's alive. The Lone Ranger's riding again. Uh, where'd I leave that badge? I'm still a United States Marshal. <laughs> Dan and Tonto, knowing nothing about the events concerning the stolen and recovered plans and the death of Nizer, started out at daybreak. Aaron York and Blandon were on hand at York's ranch to see them off. Believe me, you two will earn the everlasting gratitude of the whole community if you bring that man you know as Jefferson back from Mexico. We sure will try, Mr. York. And there might be a nice reward for you. Uh, we try to find them. Good luck to you. Thanks. Uh, Get up. Get him up, Scout. Think you'll find them, York? I think so. That Indian has a knack of following trails. Woodry and Smitty are ahead of Darwin, aren't they? Yes. Darwin's following them. <laughs> Thinking he's following the men that have his stolen plan. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least there's one thing we don't have to worry about. The Lone Ranger's out of our way. True. But I still want Nizer out of the way. I want... What's the matter? Look over there on top of that hill. What is it? Oh, to a horseman, eh? They seem to be coming this way. It'll be some time before they get here. Come on over to the house. We'll meet them there. Landon, you know who those two horsemen are? I can just about see them to know their faces. The one is that Secret Service man, Baker. And the other's the new Marshal, Smiley Royson. Yeah? Landon, I don't like this. They're following tracks. Yeah? Our tracks. The ones you and I made after we got the Lone Ranger last night. They're coming right here to your ranch. It was Royson and Baker who fired on us after we shot that masked man. Yeah. And they've seen us sitting here on the porch. Well, what do you tell them? Hmm, have to tell them something. Good 
Good thing I stayed here this morning instead of going to my office in town. Yeah. Landon, neither one of those men are fools. That's right. They followed the tracks to my home. They'll know the masked men killers are here. Unless... Unless what? Unless they have tracks to follow away from here. And you've got to give them tracks away from here. I'll put on an act. Say, uh, aren't you the new marshal? That's what I am. Just the man I want to see. I had horse thieves here at my place. What's that? Horse thieves? You hear that, Baker? Yeah. They sneaked in during the night, left a couple of horses, and took two of mine. We spotted their tracks going south. Oh, did you see them? Well, no, but you can see the tracks over there. Fresh tracks. Come on, Baker. We're getting close. Get Come up on, there. Get up. <laughs> Let him charge the Indian with murder. They won't believe anything the Red Skinner Dan says. But the Indian won't be able to find Darwin for us if he's arrested. When he's arrested, Blandon, I'll find Darwin myself. Jeff Darwin of the Secret Service had disappeared while on his way to check details of highly secret plans for the fortification of the western frontier. His disappearance started the biggest manhunt the West had ever known. Scouts, lawmen, frontiersmen, and special agents sought a man who answered Jeff Darwin's description. But of these, only a trusted few, including the Lone Ranger, knew why he was wanted. Darwin had survived the attack of Aaron York's men, but had lost the secret plans. Ashamed and grim, Darwin hid his identity behind a beard and an assumed name. He was determined to recover the plans or let the world forever think him dead. Aaron York was an opportunist, masking his freeboot activities with a respectable front and an office in Prairie Bend. Behind locked doors, he showed the plans to his right-hand man. There they are, Blandon. These are the written details, and these are the pencil sketches my men found on Darwin. Hmm. None of it makes any sense. These sketches might mean anything. The writing is just a jumble of words. That's what I told you. Yeah, you was right, Mr. York. As this stuff stands, it's worthless. Decoded, I can sell it for a fortune to another nation. But if Washington knows the plans are stolen, won't they change the fortifications? No. Because as soon as I get them decoded, I'll see that the Secret Service recovers the plans. Washington will never know that they've been copied. Uh, I see. And I better put them back in my desk. You think Jeff Darwin knows the code, huh? Of course he does. That's why I want him. He'd be my prisoner right now if it wasn't for my confounded bad luck. It ain't all been bad, Mr. York. It was good luck that you learned about the Lone Ranger being here in Prairie Bend to find Darwin. Ah, look what happened. I knew the Lone Ranger was looking for the trail of Darwin's piebald horse. I sent men with that horse to lead him on a wild goose chase to Mexico. And instead of the Lone Ranger, Jeff Darwin found the trail and followed it. But you got that Indian Tano and the kid to go after Darwin. They think he's a crook named Jefferson. Blandon, don't be a fool. Huh? Have you forgotten the new Marshal, Smiley Royson? And that Secret Service man here in town? Baker? Yes. After we shot and killed the Lone Ranger, they followed our tracks to my ranch. They knew they were on the tracks of the murders. I had to give them a story about the killer stealing fresh horses from me. Yeah, that's so. Well, Royson and Baker will go after Dan and that Indian, thinking that they're the ones that killed the Lone Ranger. They can't prove they're innocent. No, but what if they compare notes? What if the Indian describes the man he's after, and Royson realizes that Mr. Jefferson is really Jeff Darwin? Hey, if that happens... That happens, we'll have to move fast. I've got to get Darwin before the Secret Service men find him. Yeah. Uh, I'll lock my desk. What are we going to do, York? Get out to my ranch and get the men ready for action in case we need them. Right. If Royson and Baker locate Jeff Darwin, they've got to get the same as we gave the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Lone Ranger was not dead, as York and Blandon thought. It was the masked man who rode with Smiley Royson in place of the Secret Service agent, Baker. I'm no hand at following tracks. Baker ain't no better. Tell me where you lost them, Smiley. I will. It's long here somewhere. I'm downright sorry me and Baker had to give up. It's all right. You did a good job following the trail as far as York's ranch. If I hadn't to go back to town and get you, we wouldn't have lost so much time. 
Them ornery killers have got a good start on us by this time. It'll be worthwhile getting them, Smiley. Yeah, it sure will. Whoever they are, they have the plans we want. Niger has those plans when he was shot. The critters that shot him have got him now. I think Niger did have the plans. If he did, then it shows that a gang got Jeff Darwin. Yes. And Niger double-crossed his own gang. He disguised himself to look like you and tried to make a deal for the plans. That's it, Smiley. His gang got wind of it and shot him. Thinking they shot me. Yeah. Niger deserved what he got, the buzzard. He was on the other... Uh, just a second. Now, rain up. Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Oh, oh, Easy. Steady there. It's right along here that them tracks petered out. <clears throat> now, let me have a look close at the ground. York told you the killer stole horses from him, huh? Yeah, and left their own horses at his place. Because the killer's horses were tired? Well, that's what York told me. I see. Here. Here's the tracks. Steady, big fella. <clears throat> Good. Steady there, Silver. <laughs> Easy. See? See the two tracks of two horses as clear as anything right here. Then they disappear on the rocky ground. Let me examine them so I'll know them again. Several tracks here, but the ones we want are on the top. I see. Now, this is where me and Baker rode. Smiley, which tracks were you following? These, right here. You say these are the tracks that are supposed to have been made by the murderers? Yeah. Them's the tracks we followed from York's ranch where the killers changed horses. But are you sure? Dead sure. The critters that made them tracks had got the plans they took off a Nizer's dead body. Just a minute. What's the matter? Uh, that can't be a mistake. No other horses wear shoes like these. What are you saying? Smiley, these tracks were made by Scout and Victor. What? The only ones who can ride those horses are Dan and Toto. You mean... It was Dan and Toto who rode south from York's ranch. But York said... York that... told you they were the murderers. York lied. But, but Great day. I why... I thought it was strange when you said the horses grew tired on the short trip to York's ranch. By thunder. Get your horse. Right. Are we going after Dan and Tano? No. We're going to call on York. <clears throat> He's likely at his office in Prairie Bend. Steady, big fella. That's where we're going. Come on, Silver. Get up. Dan Reed and Tonto were in Mexico. They reined up sharply as they saw on the trail ahead a campfire. Oh, Victor. Oh, fella. Oh, oh, fella. Oh. The solitary man beside the fire didn't see or hear the Indian and the Lone Ranger's nephew, but both knew that it was the man they called Mr. Jefferson. That's the man, Tonto. There's no doubt about it. Ah. Uh, now we ask him plenty questions. What do you think about him? Me not know, Dan. Maybe him good fella like Thundercloud say, and maybe crook like York say. We soon know. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. Neither Dan nor Tonto knew that this bearded man was in reality Jeff Darwin, the secret service man for whom the nation sought. Mr. Jefferson? Oh, Scout. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, Victor. Oh, 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 Dan. Tonto. Uh, uh. We follow you long way, Jeff. We sure have, Mr. Jefferson. Followed me? But but why? Fella, tell us you crook. Him say we get big reward if we bring you back. Who said that? Fella named York. Oh, Aaron York. Has an office in the bend. That's right. So uh, you've come to take me back to him? But Chief Thundercloud say you not crook. I see. Well, that was mighty nice of Thundercloud. What do you think, Tonto? Well, you run away, leave Dan and me. Tonto, I know you both tried to help me. But I told you that I was looking for one man. I had to meet him alone. That's right. Well, what are you going to do? You found me. Uh, Jeff, you got stew over campfire. Yes, I was just going to grab a little food. Well, maybe you got enough split three-way, huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Get your cups from your saddlebags. I've got a couple of extra spoons here. You bet. Golly, I'm starved. Leave horse here, Dan. All right. Sit right down over here. Uh, Help yourself. Here. Just dip right in. Uh, uh, you go first, Dan. You bet I will. Uh, Jefferson, Thundercloud won't Lone Ranger help you. You, uh, you explained that he was busy, Tonto. You and Dan have been mighty fine to me. Oh, uh, Thundercloud not ask Lone Ranger... To help Crook. Why did you chase me? I thought you planned to take me back to Aaron York. Maybe you got more to say, huh? Well, I wonder. Tonto, 
Do you know who the Lone Ranger's trying to find? No. Me not know. Him not say. It secret. He's looking for the same man that Smiley Royson and countless others are trying to find. A secret service man named Jeff Darwin. Well, what did Darwin do? I'm afraid the government suspects him of turning traitor. Golly. If they catch him, they'll hang. I don't know. You see, I am Jeff Darwin. Huh? You! Oh, golly. Well, Tonto? Thundercloud say you are not crook. Thanks. I'm going to give you the details. You see, I was given some highly secret plans for the fortification of the western frontier. I had to ride a horse west of Parker's Bend. Huh? It was a piebald. I've already told you how men attacked me at night on the bank of the river. Ah, uh, one fellow named Neiser. Yes. They stole everything, including my horse and, and those secret plans. They left me for dead. You know the story from there. Yeah, Thundercloud's men found you and nursed you back to health. Then Thundercloud sent for us to help you. You see, I'd sooner let the world think I'm dead than face the disgrace of losing those plans. Well, we nearly got Neiser. We followed his tracks to that cave. Then you remember how I asked you to let me leave the other end of that long cave alone? Uh-huh. Yes. When we came out of the cave, we learned that you'd ridden away to the south. That's right. And that's when York say you crook. I wonder why York said that. Me not know. Well, I'll tell you why I rode away in such a hurry, Tonto. I'm following the trail of a piebald horse. You mean... The horse that was stolen from me at the same time the plans were taken. Golly. I saw the horse's tracks, and I met a man who described the horse. It's my horse, all right. Now, where tracks a horse? Right over there, Tonto. There are two horses. The one on the left is a piebald. Ah, uh, me take look. Tonto went in the direction indicated by Jeff, moving slowly and carefully scrutinizing the ground for the tracks Jeff said were there. After a short time, he found the tracks of two horses... Close study revealed facts to the Indian which had escaped the notice of the Secret Service man. With a grunt of satisfaction, Tonto turned and with quick steps started back to the campfire where Jeff and Dan were eating and talking. Those riders can answer some questions I want to ask. Then all this time the Lone Ranger's been trying to find you and you've been with us. Well, I didn't know at first, Dan, who the Lone Ranger was looking for. Harrison. You know, what is it? You not eat anymore. What? Leave rest of food. Put water on fire. Here, me fix it. Why, I... Tonto, what... There's no time to eat now. You near end a trail. Near the end? Color on piebald horse, pass here a few minutes ahead of you. Are you sure? Grass still bend down. You get to saddle. We ride fast. Catch piebald pl- plenty quick. Come on, then. Here, Victor. Steady there. You go ahead. Steady I'll catch you. Uh, get to saddle quick. All right. I'm ready. Take the lead, Tonto. Show me the way to that piebald horse. Get him up, scout. Get up there. Come on, Victor. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Tonto and Dan Reed rode with Jeff Darwin on the trail of the piebald horse. Darwin knew it was the horse had been stolen from him by the same thieves that took the secret plans. Aaron York had sent two of his men, Baudry and Smitty, to ride into Mexico in the hope of luring the Lone Ranger on a false track. We've done all right so far, Smitty. Yeah, but there's one thing bothers me, Baudry. What's that? What if that lone ranger catches up with us? What if he does? He wants Jeff Darwin, not us. Well, that horse will ride. Well, what about it? He can suspect this was Darwin's horse. He can know it, but what can he do? Ain't he been made a special agent by the government? I understand he has. Well, that means he's got to act official. He can't do anything that ain't official, such as trying to arrest us outside the United States. That's so. This is Mexico. Sure it is. And the United States laws don't mean a thing this side of the border. That's why York lives handy to the border. Now, do you savvy? Why, sure. The Lone Ranger can't do a thing to us, even if he does catch us. Uh, rain up a minute. Whoa, there. Whoa, Whoa. easy. Whoa. What is it? Well, from here we can see a long ways back. We'll scan the valley and see if this... I see three horsemen. Hey, one of them horses is white. 
Would that be the Lone Ranger? I don't know. I can't make out the riders yet. Yeah, they're coming fast, mighty fast. Look at the dust trail back of them. One horse looks like a paint. One is. Can you make out the faces yet, Baudry? Not quite. I can tell one thing, though. The Lone Ranger ain't one of them three. He ain't? The rider of the paint horse is an Indian. Say, Smitty, this is a fine kettle of fish. What's the matter? Those men are following our trail all right enough. One of them is Jeff Darwin. Darwin? You mean to say that the man that York wants so bad is here in Mexico? There he is, riding right up to meet us. Uh, then he must have found the trail of the piebald instead of the Lone Ranger. Must have. I don't know how it happened, but the facts are there. But hold on, Smitty. This is good. Ain't York looking for Darwin? Sure. All right. We'll take Darwin right back to York. Yeah, there's three of them against two, and that engine We ain't going to fight. Now you just leave it to me. I got a slick scheme. Yeah, it better be mighty slick. It is. Now you just follow my lead in anything I say. Savvy that? Sure. I'll have Darwin eaten right out of my hand. There's where you are. He's yelling at you. Sure he is. I'm riding his horse. I've got a gun on you. I'll make the move. Lift your hand, shoulder, high, Smitty. Right. Oh, oh, who's coming? Oh, 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 Looks oh, like I've got the man I want. You know who I am? Strange, I don't know nothing about it. What's the idea of storming up to a couple of harmless gents like that? Is this a stick-up? It's no stick-up. You're riding my horse. Now, hold on, stranger. This here is my horse. Oh, it is, huh? Where did you get it? I bought it for cash money and a straight deal. Shucks, I ain't had the critter but a couple of days. Where did you buy it? Now, see here, I ain't called on to answer your questions. I bought it from a downright honorable gent. I didn't buy it from no horse thief. That's why I know it ain't your beast. If there's a partly healed cut on the left shoulder, the horse is one that was stolen from me. Well, take a look. Say, Smitty, there is a cut on the critter's shoulder. There's the cut? Do you reckon that gent deals in stolen horses? I don't know. He seemed downright honest. Important man, too. Maybe I shouldn't have told him he was riding south. It tempted him to sell us... Where did you buy this horse? Why, just north of the border. Not more than ten miles north. Maybe less than that. From whom? Uh... What was his name, Smitty? Let me see. York. That's it. Aaron York. Why, that's the man who... York. Say, look here. If he sold me stolen horse flesh, I'm going back and call him on it. I got a right to get my money back. If you can prove that the horse was stole from you. We're all going back to call on Aaron York. Oh, no, I thought it was strange that he sent you after me. What was that, mister? Never mind. Let's start back. We'll see what Aaron York has to say. You bet we will. Come on, Smitty. Get him up. Get him up. Lone Ranger and Smiley Royson had reached Prairie Bend and were heading for the office of Aaron York, knowing he would be there sooner or later. Meanwhile, York was in his ranch house several miles south of town. He and Blandon saw the five approaching horsemen. They didn't understand the situation. They were armed, backed by other gunmen, prepared for anything. They saw the riders rein up. Hold, 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 hold. Uh, there's York's house right there. Over yonder is the stable where he had this high piebald horse. All right, dismount. We'd better all go. York's likely to want to argue this point. Ah, uh, that's right. Good idea. Man, there's no need for you to go. Well, the more we have, the more likely he is to be reasonable. All uh, right. Come on, Smitty. I'm with you. Maybe uh, you better do the talking, seeing as how it's your heart. I'll do the talking, all right. I'll have quite a few things to say. Maybe you better hand your gun to me. What? You too, Injun. Hey, wh- what's this? Come on, hand him over. You heard what Baudry told you. Say, what? York wants you, Jeff Darwin. Fact is, he needs you. That's it. Come on, Blanton. I'm with you, York. Now keep him covered. How'd you do it, Bodie? I tricked him. So you're... You're Aaron York's man. Sure I am. And so was Nizer before he got big ideas. Nizer worked for you? <laughs> you're not so smart, huh, Darwin? Maybe he didn't recognize Bodie. <laughs> well, he didn't, boss. Darwin, I was with Nizer when he got you on Moccasin River. <laughs> How do you like that? You were. Get him inside. Take him into the house. Now we're in the clear, Blandon. Sure are. Well, these critters prisoners and the Lone Ranger dead. Why? What that? <laughs> the Lone Ranger? Get to the house. Hurry it up. Did, did you say the Lone Ranger was dead? He is, and someone just like him is. Huh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, Blandon? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Take him to the room at the end of the hall. It's got the strongest door, and it's just about soundproof. <laughs> You know why we want a soundproof room, gents? I bet I know, boss. You want Darwin to do something for you. 
I might take some rough treatment to get it, huh? <laughs> that's it, Baudry. <laughs> yes, sir, that's it. Uh, Jake, Pete, get the rest of the boys. Bring them to the big room. We got Jeff Darwin. All right, we're coming, boss. Oh, oh, this is good. The whole government looking for Darwin, and he walks, uh, should I say, he rides right up to my own man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here we are. Ah, step right in there. Of all the fool, stupid things no. I ever... No, you're not to blame, Jeff. Go on, get in there. You too, kid. I am. There we are. Now, uh, bring some of those chairs over here, boys. Bring five of them. All right, boys. We'll put three strong chairs right in a row. Pete, you get a fire going in that fireplace. We'll warm this room up a little bit. I'll take care of it, York. Get some red-hot coals. We find Mr. Darwin a little stubborn. We might find the coals handy to persuade him to do what we want. Just what do you want me to do? Oh, I think you can guess, Darwin. There's the chairs. Now sit down there. What if I don't? Oh, don't be brave, Darwin, or I'll make you see Tonto and the boys squirm before I go to work on you. Why, you... Sit down. Now, boys, close the shutters in those windows. All right, boys. Make sure they're all bolted on the outside. Jake, you and Pete tend to that. Taking no chances, Darwin. Here's the ropes. Time to the chairs. See that you make them good and tight. Must have used this room before, York. Bolts on the outside (laughs) of the shutters. This, Darwin, is my prison. I got all the guns, boss. Darwin, you already know that, uh, or at least you've guessed, that I have the plans that Baudry and Neiser took from you. Yes? I want those plans decoded. (laughs) What if I don't know how to decode them? Maybe the code is held by someone on the coast to whom I was taking the plans. You don't know the code. Tondo and Dan are going to suffer first. Then you. Don't tell them a thing, Mr. Darwin. Now that the Lone Ranger's dead, I don't care what happens. Him not make Darwin betray government, Dan. Only I have... Jeb Darwin, you tell York to go to blazes. We'll see what he tells me. Boys, you needn't stay in the room with these three. Go out and lock the door on them. Let them realize how helpless their position is. I got to ride into town and get the plans for my office. Want me to go for you? No, I'll go myself. You get that fire going good, Blandon. And leave these three to watch what flames can do to hard wood. You know what I mean, Darwin? You coyote. (laughs) I'll be back inside an hour. If I'm not, Blandon, use your judgment. Delighted over the sudden turn of fortune, Aaron York rode into Prairie Bend. Who, fellow? Who? Stay now. He dismounted in front of his office, unlocked the door, and went inside. He didn't notice the man who followed close behind him. He stepped to his desk and unlocked the drawer. Here we are. <laughs> I'll soon have these plans decoded. All right, York, you're covered. You... Royce. Well, I reckon them will be the government plans we want. Yeah, Royce. Pretty smart, huh? Just keep your hands on the desk and no tricks. I need no tricks, Royce. I don't think you'll take these plans when you hear what I have to say. Talk fast. Let me mention a few names. Dan Reed, Tonto, Jeff Darwin. You know them? What about them? They're at my house, Royson. And if I'm not there in half an hour with these papers and drawings, they'll all be shot. Why, you... And if there's any attempt to get them, my men have orders to put the first bullets through their heads. Now, what'll it be, Royson? Will you sell those three lives for these pieces of paper? I'll make that decision. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger has come face to face with York. What is the masked man's decision? What would you do in a situation like that? Why don't you try it? Decide what course of action you'd take, and then see if the Lone Ranger does the same thing. But whether you put yourself in the masked man's place or not, be sure to tune in to the next episode for the thrilling wind-up of the biggest of all manhunts.
story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.